Hey, welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the variable valve timing solenoid found on GM's 2.4 liter Ecotec engine. All right, so to replace this variable valve timing solenoid, you're going to need a couple of tools. First of all, you'll need a flat blade screwdriver to remove the clamps for the air box assembly, a 10 millimeter socket to remove the VVT solenoid bolt, and then a pliers comes in handy to pull the VVT solenoid out. I'll show you that in just a second. Now also, before you get into this, you need to determine if you're replacing the intake side or the exhaust side variable valve timing solenoid. There are going to be two different part numbers on this engine. Exhaust side is going to have the black connector. The intake side is going to have the gray connector. You'll find the intake side on the front side of the engine, most front of the vehicle, and the exhaust side on the back side of the engine facing the firewall. Now as we get into this job, uh, you should expect this to take probably about a half hour or so to do if you've never done the job before. But we'll start in with our flat blade screwdriver releasing the hose clamp that's attaching our airbox assembly to our throttle body down underneath there. Take and loosen this hose clamp as well over here, which attaches our airbox assembly to our air filter box. Pull that off of there. Now there is a black plastic hose that's over here. We're going to pull that out from underneath this cover. There's a rubber grommet under there, so we'll pull this hose directly towards the front of the vehicle. There's no sort of special clips or anything on there. It's just mounted in the rubber grommet. We'll spin that up out of the way. We'll start by pulling the cover off from the front, off of the two hold downs in the back, and we can move this out of the way. Uh, remove the oil cap to get this cover off. There's a clip back here, a clip on here, and a clip over on this side. Pull that cover off, set it out of the way. Now always put the oil cap back on. You don't want any contaminants falling back into the engine. Now before we get to actually replacing these VVT solenoids right here, we want to make sure that nothing's going to fall into the hole when we remove the solenoid. So uh, a blow gun or an air gun to blow all the crud out of there first is always a good first step. With all the debris removed, we'll take our small flat blade screwdriver and we'll put it Insert it here above the, uh, right below the locking tab, above the retention clip here. We'll pull that locking tab up out of the way so we can push on our clip and disconnect our connector. Now with our 10 millimeter socket, we'll loosen the bolt. Now be careful, this bolt might come all the way out. We don't want it to fall into the engine. So I'm gonna try to uh, Try to make sure it stays in the VVT solenoid on removal. Now it's not uncommon for these to be stuck in here and not come out by hand. This is where the pliers comes in handy, like I mentioned earlier. We'll take and clamp on the, on the upper connector body here. Again, this thing's been, this has definitely failed, so we don't have to worry about wrecking it at this point, but we want it to come out in one piece. I'm gonna wiggle it back and forth and out it comes. Now, before you go putting the new one in, you want to check a couple things on this old solenoid. First of all, you want to make sure the screens aren't full of metal. If there's a bunch of metal stuck in these screens, that could mean that there's engine failure or wear inside of the engine that could lead to failure. Usually, you'll end up with a noise or something in the engine. But if that's the case, simply replacing this VVT solenoid will not fix that metal issue. You have a, a bigger issue going on here that needs to be diagnosed. Also on the old solenoid, make sure it comes out with the O-ring attached. We don't want to be leaving that inside of, the, uh, inside of the cylinder head there. That could cause problems with our new solenoid. Now we'll take a rag and we'll clean up around the port here where the solenoid goes into the engine. Now you'll notice when you get your new variable valve timing solenoid that it'll likely come in a plastic bag and it'll be oily right out of the bag. That's because these things are tested prior to being sold. That way the, you know, we know that they work. Now your new one is, is uh, likely going to come with the bolt that's attached in there so it can't fall out. And then the O-ring is going to have to get lubed up. Now for this, what, I'll, what I do a lot of times is pull the, uh, pull the dipstick out, get a little bit of engine oil on my fingers, and lube up this O-ring. That way it doesn't roll, we don't have issues with the O-ring causing leaks in the future. Don't force it when you're installing it. You might have to wiggle it side to side just a little bit, but it should drop right into place. Now it's not uncommon for it to not sit flush right away, and that's because the bolt is sticking up in the, uh, in the bracket. Start to thread the bolt in by hand.
And then we'll just snug it down. All right, nice and snug with a little quarter inch ratchet. Plug it back in. And don't forget to push the locking retainer back down on the connector. All right, now before buttoning everything up on this engine, I like to run the vehicle and make sure that the new solenoid's not leaking any oil externally or anything. So I'm not gonna put the top cover on. I'm gonna just start by putting the, the air box assembly on first. Now you don't have to bolt down or, or, or attach the, uh, tighten down the hose clamps yet. We can just let them sit on there putting the breather hose back in here. And let's just fire this thing up and make sure that we don't have any, any leaks. All right, so I usually like to let it run about five minutes or so, just to make sure that it's not leaking any oil before we put everything back together. So pop this back off of here. It's gotta come off anyway to put our cover back on. And uh, no leaks are found. Everything looks exactly like it was. Be careful now, the engine will probably be hot. But uh, no leaks are found, we're good to go. Reattach our cover. And then when putting the air box assembly back on here, I like to attach it at the back first, get it in the two hold downs back there, then get it onto the throttle body and then last on the air filter assembly. And then just snugging up the two hose clamps that hold it on. And then don't forget to put this, uh, this breather hose back into the rubber, rubber grommet underneath the cover, or you will end up with a check engine light coming on for that. So speaking of that check engine light, it's not uncommon for the light to be on on the dash after the repair. That's because anytime we're dealing with an emissions problem and that light is on, it's gotta pass a certain amount of tests prior to it uh, shutting the light off on its own. So now might be the time to clear the light out or just wait for it to clear after a few days of driving. If you guys liked the video today, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, making sure to click on that little bell icon on there. That way you get notified when we come out with our next videos. I really appreciate you guys watching. Thanks so much for being there. And as always, happy wrenching, everyone. Thank you. All right.